Live, this is Fox 56 News, first at 10, with Dane Moran and Ryan Cummings. The public was instrumental in bringing this investigation to a successful conclusion. The nationwide manhunt for Steve Stevens is now over. The accused killer who posted a murder on Facebook shot himself today. Police found Stevens in Erie County. Officers say he committed suicide in his car. Pennsylvania State Police were tipped off by a McDonald's employee. That worker noticed Stevens' white Ford Fusion in the parking lot. PSP tracked him down, which led to a pursuit before they say he shot himself. Stevens was accused of killing 74-year-old Robert Godwin Easter Sunday in Cleveland, Ohio. And Mark Zuckerberg had this to say at his Facebook summit this morning. Our hearts go out to the family and friends of Robert Godwin Sr. And uh, we have a lot of work and we will keep doing all we can to prevent tragedies like this from happening. Given the same evidence was presented to us that you saw, that we'll be, we will be going to a penalty phase. A turn of events in the Eric Freen murder trial. The prosecution rested its case. Then the defense announcing it will not call any witnesses to the stand. Brian Sheehan in the courtroom as the testimony came to an end. Good evening. The jury was dismissed for the day when testimony came to an end just before 1130 this morning. Closing arguments are set to begin here tomorrow morning at 9. Now that's when both sides will have their last chance to argue their case to the jury before deliberations begin. The prosecution hoping they find Eric Freen guilty of murdering Corporal Brian Dixon and severely injuring Trooper Alex Douglas at the Blooming Grove Barracks back in September of 2014. Freen is pleading not guilty to those charges. Outside the courthouse this afternoon, Freen's lawyers Michael Weinstein and Bill Russo saying they believe the prosecution presented a well-organized and persuasive case involving complex evidence, more than 530 pieces in total. Russo also saying they expect a penalty phase will take place based on the evidence the prosecution presented in court throughout the trial. Here's what both sides had to say as they left the courthouse this afternoon. It's for the jury to, to now evaluate the evidence, evaluate the testimony, and, and make a decision as to whether or not uh, it uh, complies with the judge's instructions about the burden of proof. There has to be a defense that's based in fact, and it doesn't appear to me that, that they had any factual basis for a defense. Again, closing argument set to begin here tomorrow morning at 9 before the case is handed over to the jury for deliberations. The verdict in the case could come as early as tomorrow afternoon. Reporting in Milford, Pike County, I'm Brian Sheehan, Fox 56 News, first at 10. And before testimony ended, a forensic pathologist discussed Dixon's autopsy. He says Dixon died from multiple gunshot wounds and ruled his death a homicide. From your weather authority, this is your Fox 56 News first forecast. Now we began the week with sunshine and temperatures in the upper 60s, mid to low 70s. Today we did see a lot of sunshine, but those temperatures have taken a step back only a little bit. 65 degrees for the high temperature today in the Valley Cities. You look at central PA, both Williamsport and Sealands Grove, right around that upper 60 mark. This is right around normal for this time of year, if not a smidge warmer than that. Currently right now, most spots dropping back into the mid to low 50s. Already have Mount Pocono and the northern tier in the upper 40s. Of course, with the clear skies, we really are going to see those temperatures continue to drop off, but it should once again be a relatively calm and really nice evening. It isn't until tomorrow afternoon that we see the clouds building ahead of rain and some storm chances to close out the work week. So coming up, I'll take you through the rest of the work week and show you when the rain and those storms are set to work their way back into northeastern PA. A former church in Susquehanna County now in ashes. It happened around 1.30 this morning. A nearby resident says this church has been abandoned for decades with regular people using drugs trespassing here. The fire is being called suspicious because it was closed and not connected to utilities. State police fire marshals are now investigating. Well, earlier today, the Spring Into Action community policing campaign started. The campaign kicked off with a do donation of 12 police bikes to six departments. Those departments include Blakely, Archbald, Old Forge, Carbondale, and Lackawanna County. Um, 
we decided on bikes because bikes allow our officers to get out into the community and to engage our local businesses, engage our citizens a little bit better than patrol vehicles. Toyota of Scranton teamed up with the local police departments to make this happen. A globally recognized photojournalist known for documenting abandoned places all over the world is featuring deserted honeymoon resorts of the Poconos in his new book. Fox 56's Jay Jarvis joins us live in the newsroom. So Jade, what did you learn from this author? Well, Dane and Ryan, Seth Lawless's new book, Autopsy of America, the, the Death of a Nation, shows forgotten cities and towns across the United States. He says that economic decline played a role in the abandonment of many Poconos honeymoon resorts. And I also spoke, spoke with the owner of a resort still in business who explained how the region is rebranding. Once the honeymoon capital of the world, the Pocono region is now dotted with abandoned resorts, collecting dust and grown over by nature. Mostly forgotten, they are now being featured in a new book by photojournalist Seth Lawless called Autopsy of America, The Death of a Nation. I knew there was a decline in the area. Some, some fans of mine on social media, on Instagram and Facebook kept telling me over and over again, hey man, you gotta come and check this out. And I just been so busy and I kind of put it off. Uh, until, you know, back in February and uh, started documenting um, all of the resorts that were abandoned in that area. And I was surprised to see how many were and just the state that they were left in. Lawless visited the Buck Hill Inn, Summit Resort, Unity House and Penn Hills Resort, which only closed its doors for good back in 2009. He believes economic decline was one of the factors that led to the shuttering of many resorts. You had so many resorts being built in a relatively short amount of period of time. Then you got people in New York and New Jersey kind of going elsewhere to get away, not so much to Pocono. So, you know, it, it's kind of a mix, I, I think, in that particular genre. Genevieve Reese, co-owner of the French Manor in South Sterling, says resorts are evolving to show the versatility of the region. We've always been a couple's um, adult, you know, only type of destination. We do get a lot of singles and girlfriend getaways, but no children. So we're a little bit different, but that's the beauty of the Pocono Mountains. There's so many different types of resorts. And pushing a rebranding movement. We still cater to the romance. We just wanted to break out of the shell of the heart-shaped tubs and let people know that there's some real luxury properties up here. It sounds like an interesting book, Jade. So what is next for the author? Well, Autopsy of America is available to purchase now. Lawless says he will be doing a book signings in Pennsylvania and throughout the country for the next several months. And the French Manor is open year round. Reporting live in the newsroom, Jay Jarvis, Fox 56 News, first at 10. One system starting up in Susquehanna County next month. How it'll help first responders. And across the region today, it certainly was a warm one with temperatures working their way back into the mid 60s. But when we come back, I will show you what the rest of the work week has in store for us as we are about to see a whole lot of change work its way back into Pennsylvania. We'll be right back.